welcome for the first, a first time vision of your board of directors. For those of you out there in television land, we are meeting here. We meet here every other week, usually on Monday nights. And we will be uh, talking to you about what goes on in the park. Uh, what will happen is that we will conduct our regular board meeting. This is typical of the way the board operates and before the COVID virus was a, th was a thing, we met, we discussed, we took questions and we will take questions tonight and then we will adjourn and go into executive session. The executive session will not be televised. So without further ado, let's start the meeting. I will start the meeting by calling the meeting to order and ask Terry to call the roll. Here. Here. Dean Hunter. Here. Scott Marcus. Here. Tara Wiley. Here. Don Wiley. Here. Nancy Phillips. Here. Jenny Ramos. Here. Assistant to Don Hatch. Here, and Don Hatch is here tonight too with us. Perfect. Everybody is here. Uh, did everybody read the minutes from last meeting? Any changes to the minutes? Yeah. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? Don, Donnie uh, has made the motion. Do I hear a second? Dean seconds. Discussion, all those in favor, please raise your hands. I see all hands raised. Thank you. I have a few remarks as, as the president. Um, I wanna thank, first of all, Don Hatch for being here tonight. Um, for those of you that don't know, Don was the original representatives from the tribes to this board and he was appointed I believe in 1977. Uh, he has been an integral part of this board and we've missed him because of the COVID thing. Uh, but he has continued to contribute to the community in the last few months by bringing food into the community for people who are in need. And we thank you for that ser service, sir. And we appreciate it. Um, we also appreciate what the chapel did uh, passing out dinners on uh, Saturday, uh, a, va a, late, a belated Valentine's uh, dinner that was wonderful. But I think we need a special thanks to the park manager, the head ranger, the assistant head ranger, and the maintenance manager for doing the cooking and being an integral part of the service. Thank you all for that. Uh, by the way, from time to time, we may remove our mask to speak. That's just uh, what we need to do and then, and then we'll put them back on. Don? Yeah, one of the things, you know, and I think you uh, named where it was done, but sometimes it should be put out there who is doing the volunteering. You know, like I see Don every time we come and uh, bring food. Somebody has to be put down there so they're appreciated by the whole membership and that they could do this because we got a lot of volunteers, but there, nobody knows because we're, we're talking here now and nobody knows who the volunteers were for that dinner. You know, I think sometimes it should be put somewhere I don't know where the somewhere is, but I think somebody, uh, maybe the park manager would, would know how to do that to be able to make sure it 
it's out there that the people that are helping putting their right foot forward and making sure and maybe it's the same one every time over here their names over here then you go to the other program and they're over here let's just uh thank them for that because sometimes people i don't ever get thanked for anything so that they won't do it anymore i, I don't want to have that happen either yeah. we usually recognize go ahead pat so uh we have been putting uh names in uh in the mooring lines when it comes out. We've been talking about the events, uh, particularly those that involve volunteers. Um, we have a digital process now uh, where there are screens throughout the park uh, and we're showing um, the events that happened and the people who are involved in those events. Uh, we put on uh, the social media pages pictures of people uh, at volunteers working at the volunteer events that we do. We've had a bunch besides the dinners. Uh, until the weather got bad, we were doing outside venues trying to offer members different things and uh, trying to recognize the people who helped out in that. And with this current chapel dinner, there was a lot of chapel volunteers along with uh, volunteers that had been working previous dinners and they'll all be acknowledged. And it's the volunteers are the backbone of the park, but a lot of times they don't get thanked enough. And a lot of times they just do it because they want to and they don't ask for any recognition at all. So that's part of what we do here. Um, I just wanted to mention a few things that the board has done. You, you folks uh, out there in television land, um, We've, we've got a lot, of, a lot of communication going on now, but I thought I'd mention a couple of things that the board just approved and that, that the park manager, a couple of uh, activities that the park manager has gotten started in the last few months. Uh, recently, we approved a contract proposal for repairs of the roads. Uh, Pat will probably go into detail about what that contract in, encompasses, but you will see an improvement in our roads. Uh, we also approved contracts to upgrade the laundromat and mail, mail center so that it looks uh, much like the um, ranger fr uh, the front base, uh, front gate ranger base. Uh, we recently approved a contract to upgrade our software system so that we can interconnect a lot of things in the park that we not, don't have interconnected right now. We uh, approved a, the purchase of a dump truck and debris blower uh, to help us with park cleanup in the spring. Uh, and we also um, approved a contract to upgrade the HVAC system at the back gate for the ranger base and also the HVAC system for up and other electrical upgrades for the chapel. So a lot is going on in the park to help us become an even better place to live and recreate. Having said that, uh, let's move on with the agenda uh, and a we need a report from our park manager, Pat Jute. Pat? Thank you, Bill. Um, as I've started each week uh, with a uh, COVID status report, I've been following the reservation <clears throat> uh, uh, weekly, and I'm really pleased to report that we're really at an all-time low, and it seems like uh, cases and tests and concerns have been uh, dropping for the last, actually the last four reports. Um, we currently have uh, zero cases that are recognized in the park, uh, zero cases on the reservation and zero uh, people that are hospitalized. And uh, that's really positive. I follow the county reports as well. And in the county, uh, it is achieving the lowest number of uh, new reported cases that we've been seeing uh, over the period of time that we've been monitoring this. Um, today, this morning, I heard a report that they have said that uh, by midsummer, uh, we will have reached hu uh, herd immunity. Uh, I hope that they're accurate with that. I hope it happens sooner. 
Uh, we're seeing a number of states that are beginning to open up more and uh, allow more uh, things to occur. Um, and of course, uh, the park is trying to follow along with that as long as we do not see an increase in uh, COVID activity. We have not had any reported cases in the park since the early days of COVID when we had six cases. Uh, currently, we have none that have been reported to us. Um, that's all good news and it's given the club's enthusiasm to start talking to us about trying to be more flexible with some of the things that they do. Uh, the CGC has come to us and asked to plan for their annual plant sale, which was uh, closed last year because of COVID. This year, uh, assuming we continue like we are this summer, they will be doing their annual plant sale. The Alt uh, Adult Center has submitted plans for a March 26th sit-down dinner inside uh, with uh, social distancing, masks, and the things that we see occurring in other restaurants around the area. Uh, and they will be doing this by reservation and uh, looking at uh, two seatings uh, to see uh, what they can handle. We'll be staying within 25% of our um, capacity of the building. Uh, they are doing further monthly meal planning and uh, Club 50 has been doing successfully for some time now taco takeout Mondays they have now asked to have a future spaghetti dinner and they're planning a St. Patrick's Day dinner. Uh, all of these will be coming out in notices to park members. Um, an interesting change that we're working on right now is the internet club. Um, you've had to pay to be an internet member. We're gonna open it up and uh, let inter internet be available to all members who wanna drive down to the center and uh, acquire internet service and there'll be some information coming out on that uh, club combined they have come to us and asked for a uh, lawn sale uh, to hold uh, down in the park in the play field that would be both adult club and club 50 and uh, we have asked them to present us with a plan for it but we're certainly supporting the idea we're talking now about a resumption of uh, the drive-in movie night that we had at, uh, towards the end of last summer uh, and other activities. Um, they've talked about a karaoke night down at the play field that would be outdoor. We've done that before. We are certainly welcome to do it again. Uh, we also want to have a PSCC uh, look back day. You know, the good old days at PSCC. I talked to a member who's been here long enough to remember 25 cent pancakes, all you could eat. And so we're gonna have a 25 cent pancake feed uh, at the, uh, down in the play field, along with five cent coffee. Um, and as I mentioned, we're looking at a karaoke night and we would like to do another uh, music in the park event that was real successful last time. The uh, family center, um, has come a long ways. They uh, were right now in the midst of rebuilding the counters and countertops and, and uh, cleaning up the store area, at which point we'll move this, the store out of the adult center back to the family center. And the family center, uh, they're getting new pool tables and, and other game equipment. And as that goes in and we get permission to open up, we'll start looking at activities at the family center. The fitness center is uh, ready to open, it's been clean, sanitized, and we've advertised for an employee uh, to monitor the center. Uh, it would have to be by reservation because there are certain space limitations that are placed upon us, but we wanna get it open and we will open it as soon as we find an employee. The Club 50 pools, we're looking, uh, in Club 50, we're looking for a structural engineer to come in and give us a little advice. We will open the club side of Club 50 uh, for activity as soon as we're permitted. The pools are gonna require some work and uh, so uh, that's undetermined when that might happen yet. We have one other area that we've discovered in this last month, which is the hillside above the laundromat. We took a large fir down that uh, uh, had been undermined considerably by the hill sloughing off and was about to fall. Uh, it would reach the laundromat. It would have taken down the covered area uh, uh, alongside. Uh, we had it professionally dropped and it fell right uh, 
perfectly, did no damage uh, in, that, uh, in that occurrence. We're having engineers, uh, soil engineers, come in and look at uh, uh, the hillside to determine what, if anything, we need to do. So Bill mentioned the building upgrades. Uh, as I mentioned, the Family Center is coming along really good, and we're, we're anticipating being able to open the store when it moves down there sometime uh, in April. Uh, and we're hoping that the rest of the Family Center is available sometime in May. Um, and then it will open uh, as soon as we're permitted to do that. Um, the the uh, laundromat in the mail center uh, will have equipment. Uh, all the material is ordered and it's supposed to be delivered this week. And we'll see a beginning there. Perfect. Yep. Yes, Don? Yeah, when he goes so far, we got to be able to discuss some of the things. And, you know, he's doing his whole report. Yeah. Taking on anything, but that's what we're here for is to talk on a little bit of what's happening because he's been talking about a lot of meetings that's going to come up. And he talked about early part when he first started, he was going to have uh, a gathering and their food gathering. But how, how many are you going to have in there, and what has the board allowed to have happen? You know, because uh, the way it sounds, the way he was reporting, you could almost have that uh, meeting in here you have on Saturdays, the way it sounds. You know, or what do you, uh, what is this board uh, allowed to have happen right now? Is anybody going to make a comment on that part? Pat, didn't you say that we would follow the protocols established? Yes. And, established uh, by who? The state? This, uh, we've been working with the state and, and with tribal uh, on the emergency uh, council. We uh, talked to them every other week. We've also talked to the resort to see what they're doing with their pools and fitness areas and using some of the recommendations they've made and certainly recommendations that we get from the tribe. And uh, as far as us holding meetings where we can have people come inside, uh, I'm prepared for that. And we talk, we discuss about that with my management team about what it would take and what it would look like. So there's a little bit of work to do in here yet uh, so that we can handle that. But the change in COVID experience has been relatively rapid in the past few weeks. And so we're laying plans uh, for anything that can get member involvement uh, back in place. And so this is what we're doing tonight is just uh, a first step in trying to do that. And uh, originally, we planned on going back to the field as soon as we could meet there because it was an outside venue. <coughs> I'm optimistic that we can meet here. And uh, it just comes down to how many members would be uh, want to come in, and we can start doing uh, the open board meetings that we did before and the member meetings that we did before. I really want to see that happen, Don. We, and we are looking at it and <coughs> trying hard to make it happen. Well, well that's, that's why I'm asking, not, not you as the manager, I'm looking at the board. Has he uh, put a, this, this many can be in the building or, or how many can be in the building? Because you could say the tribe did this, but you know, you do, you'd live under the tribes, not the state, because uh, the state don't rule what's out here, the, the tribe does. And uh, what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, we gotta know, or there's some kind of a recommendation from the tribe that the health program, they're going by the health program of the county, is what, uh, what kind of recommendation you have? Because when you talked about opening up one of them for a meal, they're gonna go in there for a meal. Is it five in there for a meal? 10 in there for a meal? 20 in there for a meal? How, ma how many are uh, gonna allow it to happen? So each- That's when you started, you st said you're gonna have an inside one. That, yeah. That's why I'm asking that question. So each, uh, I required each of the clubs to present a written plan for what it is that they want to do. And then I've consulted with both the tribe and, and the state uh, regulations uh, to see if that we fit within the guidelines that they put out. And the state is at six people now per table and 25% uh, occupancy of the building and, so, and social space tables. And that's exactly what's being presented to me. So that's th why we are looking at reservations and um, a, uh, set of servings. In other words, we'd have a first serving and a second serving, uh, depending on the reservations that we get. 
In the past, we've never taken reservations for these things, but now we have the system in place that we've learned from all of the takeout dinners that we did, and Jacob will be managing that so he can come and tell the staff, here's how many reservations that we have uh, for the night, and here's when they can come in, and they're gonna set tables, and they'll set uh, uh, the tables so that they're spaced and where people can sit. But still, I haven't heard from here as the board, we're, going, we're doing this or are we doing that? So at meetings that you... No, 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 no. Let, me, let me finish. Okay, sorry. Let me finish. <coughs> Is that, uh, you know, because the tribal council will say you can, they close down certain buildings. Okay, they're going to let so many go in there. I think that it has to come from here because these are the bosses of this. You follow the directions as the manager of what, what the, the board recommends and the, through that because... So, Unless, unless uh, they have it written, then you could follow something that's written. Yeah. But as far as I know, nothing is answer. written yet. Huh? Let me answer. Nothing is written yet, as far as I know. So, Don. Can, can I jump in? Go ahead. What, what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Don, what we've been doing since COVID started, is this on? Is when something comes, you know, when, when a proposal is brought, it comes before the board we discuss it and I think like with the adult center they just received the request this morning okay and it will come to us I think he's just kind of given us an overview because on any openings we've been doing the approvals mm -hmm. just kind of FYI it's kind of changed with the COVID and that's kind of how we've rolled Nancy and I just want to thank Yes. Well, let's not forget yeah. that. I want to thank you. Bill? I would like to know why the clubs are not using the liaison to let us know about dinners. I mean, we always hear from you. I mean, why do we have liaisons down there? So that would, uh, I would say that the liaisons have been talking to me and to they shouldn't each. be talking to you they go to come to the board to let us know so un unfortunately the way it's been working is i've been bringing each of these issues to the board we've discussed it as a board uh, i've given my recommendation and the board's approved them that that's not the point the liaison should be bringing it to the board we're not going to you or bill okay. asking for permission it, it's, for wait, wait, uh, Terrell, did you have something I just was gonna say I, I agree with with Bill E. I mean I don't I find that as a board we don't get the information until after the after, after it's already been planned and because how many times have I emailed saying did we get a COVID plan? So I it, you know I'm just gonna say I agree with Bill E that there needs to be better communication within this group, not okay. after the fact. Okay, Deb and then Nancy. If I can remember what I was going to say, <laughs> um, but we do have to delineate one one portion of it, and it's kind of a. I mean, yes, we do like with what Bill and Tar Terrell were saying. It's board that approves it, but we also have another part of it, and Pat's in charge of the building. So it's kind of a both thing. But our li no no Bill, the liaisons need to be talking to their. I mean, the clubs need to be talking to their liaisons. And there was, there was something that was put on chat one day last week where somebody wanted to bring something forward. And I said, you need to be bringing it to your liaison who will bring it to the board. And I guess that's what we need to maybe do a better job at communicating to our clubs Nancy, as liaisons. Nancy, then Don. I, I just want to say that as a liaison, those things that are park manager business, I tend to the park manager. Those things that are board business, I bring to the board. And there's a distinct difference, and I try to respect that. So if you want to know my position, that is it. Well, one of the things is, and I appreciate what you're saying, Nancy. One, one of the things is that when you do things, we, we are here making the policies. We're making the rules. Then the manager follows the rules. And so we see 15 people in this building. That's all can come in here. And it can't go, he can't change it the, uh, unless we have another meeting that says 20 can be in here. Maybe 50 can be in here. We have to, uh, 
I mean, we're responsible for this whole park yeah. and not the, the building committee. The rules are set okay. by this board and the building committee will look at it and somebody will go to the building committee and says, Do you, does it fit? Then goes to the, the general manager and if, it's, uh, if it fits, then, then it can go because we said it had to go like this to make sure, but we got to do something here to make sure who we following. Who we following, that car that went by, is that who we're following? Okay. Thank so, you. Um, I, as well as every other board member, read every word in our motions and minutes. And all these motions pass, so there's two or three. Well, we have the three things that I want to know. Yeah. We didn't even know I'm, Wait, Nan, talking about officially. I'm just going to say, Deb and then Terrell. And, and again, I guess we as the liaisons to the committees probably need to do a better job of letting our committees know that they need to be coming to us. And it frees Pat up because he, his plate's overflowing with everything else already. Yeah. Terrell. And I, yeah, and I just would reiterate, you know, it, things get planned all the time. And I'm going, what? I mean, I didn't realize we were doing this. Yeah. And I get it, it's not anything, you know, devious or wrong, it's just, you know, we need to know as a group when things are <coughs> like, and I'm going to use ceramics because I don't want to upset your wife, but I mean, I had no idea that we were conducting ceramics. I mean, maybe I missed the meeting, but I mean, until it was posted broadly on Facebook, I'm just like, whoa, wait, <laughs> you know, we've had a group that's meeting, you know, so we just need to do a better job at making sure we're all on the same page. Same with the food. You know, I have no idea what's going on. You know, it, Can when I it's comment, coming Bill? in. I mean, it'd be nice to know what the plan is. Okay. Pat? So the plan that was presented to us by the coordinator for ceramics was presented to the board. If you didn't get one, I have no idea why, but it was presented and read in this front of this board, and the board approved the ceramics activity. So, yep. you know, I, I don't know. That's what I've been doing with all of them. I don't know what uh, liaisons I've had trouble the, the committees for the uh, places meet once a month. They, enter, they talk to each other while they're not in committee meeting. They come up with ideas because I've asked them to come up with ideas about things that we could do for the park. And they present the ideas. I don't get stuff from liaisons because I don't think liaisons attend many of the meetings, to be honest with you. Well, they should be. Scott? Uh, as a liaison to two committees, I attend every meeting that is called From the adult club? From the adult club, I did, yeah, and I asked to you know, have them give me the plan so I could present it to the board, but I, I never did see it. But the, 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 I heard about it first mm -hmm. tonight. Right. So, so you said that, uh, because, uh, you know, <laughs> so, Scott, uh, I received a plan two days ago from them. And Kimmy Cook has been sick, and so she has been uh, not communicating at all. It came from their, uh, uh, their planning, one of their planning people in the adult uh, club. Uh, I think that maybe she didn't know she was supposed to send you a copy if you didn't get one, but she presented it to me so that we could look at it and see if it held the, the pieces that were necessary to have a possibility of passing. Done. Yeah, one, one of the things is I, I think uh, we're losing, and I've I seen this before when I was here, was that we end up giving too much authority to the representative on each committee that they can, as because they're board of directors, we give them a little more, uh, give them authority, or they think they have more authority than they have. I think the only authority would be going to the general manager that the committee would, uh, that wants to have something then go to the general manager, then he goes to Bill, then he brings the Bill brings it to us to make sure that we're all on the same page. 
see the way it sounds, and, uh, and I'm going to tell you, that's why I, uh, you know, being sitting on a big committee and the school board, as well as the tribal council, that's what we do. Because we give each one big, uh, more authority than they should be having, and they can make some of the decisions. It should not happen, because it hurts you. It hurts you. That way the board doesn't know totally what's happening. Hopefully that we can, uh, it will happen. And, but I'm not saying Pat, is, he's doing a bad job. No, it's what we do to put in front of him. We put these policies, we put the rules in here and everything in here, and he goes by them. Because if, it, if it's wrong, it's not his fault, it's our fault. It's our fault that it went south on us. It's our fault. Because we should have changed it so he isn't getting in trouble. He's only doing what we asked him to do. And I think that's some of the things we need to look at, how we do things in each committee. Thank you. I think it should be said that a lot of the things that Pat is saying to us are informational types of things, giving us heads up about what's going on and telling us what has happened as a result of our policy uh, making. So uh, maybe we need to differentiate between uh, what has happened and what you would like to see happen uh, with board approval. Anyway, go ahead with your so, go ahead, so if I could just switch gears for a moment, Jacob, and I have had a conversation. I've been bringing packets in here every board meeting that contains the information that you've asked about tonight. And I'm going through a stack of blue folders and a lot of printing and a lot of paperwork. I have no idea what you guys do with it when the meeting's over, but I've done that as supporting documentation for things that we've presented, either for motions or actions or activities. And uh, in our discussions, I believe, and Terry, of course, always comes back and says, gee, I'd sure like to I have you guys send this to me beforehand. We've discussed the idea of uh, issuing park-owned tablets to each board member, assigning them. And then instead of me making a report and bundling it and putting it up, and I'll tell you, it takes a bit of time uh, to do all that. I put, just leave them on the computer that I made them, put them all on your tablets, you have all the information, along with, for example, th you know, my agenda for tonight, my report, You'd have that there, and you could just refer to it from your tablets, and you would have it permanently there. Tablets are not real expensive, and if there's interest, you know, we can talk to Jacob. We don't need to do it now, but and move forward with this sort of a plan. You could, then could be sending each other information, and we can get rid of all this paper. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and you'd have it there. And then for those of you who don't attend meetings, like when I bring a packet of information and you don't attend the meeting or you attend it virtually, you don't get that stuff. Mm -hmm. This way you would get it. Everybody would have it. You could look at it. As I produce things over the week, I could send them and it would be in your tablet. <coughs> so it's hopefully it would be a step in the right direction to help all of you understand more what's going on all week long. Yeah, moving, moving right along. Asphalt roads. We met with the contractor last week. We got a schedule together starting on the 29th. There are gonna be days that we have to close uh, Constitution. We're trying to still work on a plan to get around it at, uh, in the Well 3 neighborhood. Uh, and we know that we're gonna have to close each gate for a day or two and reroute traffic to the other gate that's open. And uh, we still are talking about trying to get around that, but I don't know that we're gonna get around it and have a successful installation. I think the two days of diversion of traffic would be, uh, give us a really good successful project. Go ahead, Jenny. Asphalting roads, it's just the back gate and the front gate and the main one? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, just the ones that have been allowed. So, and, and it's yeah. repairs, yeah. as opposed to uh, running new asphalt. Uh, and the uh, gravel roads, we're working with uh, the contractor, our contractor, uh, in cr finding methods to resurface and correct for water drainage and to follow up um, how we treat the roads after the grid contractor 
is done digging trenches and backfilling and so forth. So we're in, in, in the discussion stages uh, with that as well. Go ahead, Jenny. Did you and the contractor talk to Kurt Nelson, our natural resource director? We, we have not yet. Okay. We haven't and gotten that far. We haven't had any more conversations without the direction of the Tulalip tribe from you. Yeah, well, so we had uh, the questions about uh, the asphalt, and that's what we were going to go to. I'm still trying to find out the composition of recycled asphalt so I could say here's what... Uh, like I said, before you start looking into that, you need to have Kurt Nelson's input. Yeah, okay. Because it's a no-go because of the streams and the green belt around here, then there's no sense of wasting any more time. Mm -hmm. So the PPP loan, uh, we are in uh, the last stage of forgiveness consideration. It's with uh, uh, SBA. Barbie, can I, can I ask a question? When you sure. took abbreviations, can you do that so the people out there will know what it is besides some of us that don't know what those abbreviations are? So a SBA is a small business association or administration. They're the ones who have uh, control over the PPP loans that were put out to businesses such as ours and small businesses so forth. They're the last ones. Uh, they funnel through a bank and a committee and the committee has to say, yeah, we'll forgive this before it goes to SBA. We've gone through that stage. It's gone to SBA now uh, for consideration and we sh they, ha they asked for a three month period. I don't know exactly where in that three month period we are. They've asked for more information which we've supplied and so it's in that stage of, uh, of consideration. We've applied for a second loan. Uh, the government came out and said that there is a second PPP round of loans. We, we applied, they qualified us, and then they have subsequently come back and said uh, that the president wants to first do uh, businesses that have uh, 25 or less employees and so that happens first. I think they were looking for an eight week period to do that. We are in the pile now for that second stage of consideration. And I'm told that they, once they consider it, if they approve it, it happens instantly, they just deposit the money in the account. We've been working on the board of directors elections. Jacob set up the filming and the photographing of candidates. We have looked now at uh, a method to do uh, electronic voting um, and uh, mail-in voting and hand-in ballots, uh, sort of a hybrid system. And uh, he is working with three different uh, contractors who do that. We don't have all the answers yet, but the answers we're getting back from this second contractor were pretty positive. It can happen. It can be uh, third-party counting uh, so we're not involved in any of that, and uh, so there are questions we have, and as soon as we get something that we believe is acceptable, we'll present it to the board. Carol? Have we considered moving the date up so it, we don't have the one week lag in announcement? You know, because we have to, if we do the contract, then we have to ship everything out. Right. And then it... You know, so, you ha so we can't do the announcement on, on Labor Day. Right, so the contractor that we're talking to now has said that they, <coughs> that, uh, that we can mail all the stuff to them. In other words, they're gonna send, they're gonna have our mailing list, mail out, uh, give it a unique number, and it'll mail back to them. The votes that we'll have to work with are the ones that they wanna do drop off in our ballot box. In which case, we would have to, more, more than likely, we're not 100% sure of this answer, but more than likely, we would have to enter that unique number, which identifies them. Uh, we wouldn't know necessarily who it was. It's a unique number, and that vote would be registered. And they do comparisons. In other words, there's one unique number for each site. And uh, so if, for some reason, somebody photocopies it and tries to duplicate it, they will only accept one vote from each a uh, unique number, and that's automatically uh, ta tabulated. So the delay would be us, but in order for this system to work that we're talking to, we would have to enter those votes that day. So that night we would know. As soon as they go in, it's an electronic tabulation, and so we should know right away. Yeah, and it seems to me, it seems to me that last year, the tabulation was done in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was right. Four days. Hardly any. But that's because we had to collect the votes and then mail the whole package to them. Right. 
So there was a, a delay there. It would be in this case, we won't be mailing mailing them the hand in ballots. They uh, would uh, want them want us to enter the ballot. Yep. So the other thing that they the first one had is that they did not want to touch mail. They would not handle any mail. Period. And so there's that too, and that was because of COVID. Uh, I know that Dean will have a, a conversation about uh, the S2 project. I just wanted to update that we have had uh, conversations with Omnicon, uh, the S2, uh, QuickBooks, and Moss about the things that the, the pieces that go into making that transition. We've established that Omnicon can, can integrate S2 with Moss uh, and uh, the other necessary things, which is uh, uh, QuickBooks. And um, we are getting closer to them having what they need to answer that. Pause for a minute. Maybe you'd like to give a little background on that, that, that whole S2 thing for the studio audience. So we've been working with Symmetry as our gate carding system, which um, is a program that was used to card in and card out on. We then batchload that information into Moss on a daily basis, which then records uh, how many people have carted in and who, have, who has carted out. In other words, a tabulation of days that you're in the park, a tabulation of days that the septic systems get used. And we are replacing the, the carting system uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, one is a lack of of cooperation from symmetry, uh, the difficulty in getting symmetry updated when there are problems, and uh, because they only permit us to have symmetry operating on two or three computers. With S2, we can operate on all the computers. We go to an API, which uh, is in the cloud, that's a, uh, Jacob, what's an API? So the API gives us the capability of integrating third-party applications into the carding system, is the simplest term to say. And it, re uh, it uh, replaces another computer sitting up in the office, right? Because it's in the cloud. Yes, we would all be up in the cloud, so we wouldn't have to have any physical infrastructure on site. So now we can, uh, we can have that information in the Ranger vehicles. They can check to see if somebody's carded in there looking at a site. For example, it gives us that. And we can fix this system ourselves. We don't have to have a contract with Allied, who has been very non-responsive every time we've had a problem. We're in the midst of a problem now. We're probably two weeks in the, in the midst of a symmetry problem that Allied has not responded to. And symmetry will not talk to us because it was contracted through Allied. So our hands are tied. So we will not be in, uh, put ourselves in that position again. Any other questions on S2? No, go ahead. <coughs> uh, grid. Uh, I talked as, as early as an hour ago with uh, uh, Nate, and uh, we are currently on schedule and on budget with the uh, grid project. Explain who Nate is. Uh, uh, Nate is the owner of uh, um, Blue Sky, who is our electrical contractor, who is managing uh, the grid installation throughout, of the, throughout the park. We are also beyond the halfway point of having the grid complete, maybe two years ahead of schedule. Um, we are talking about other issues with uh, the grid project. The other issue, of course, is 50 amp service and uh, fiber optic upgrades. And uh, we have um, a lot of questions ourselves before we can really answer this. And a lot of those questions really surround uh, the, the fiber optic availability. Salish inter, uh, Internet is providing fiber optics. They are in the park. They have been laying uh, uh, wire and uh, preparing to do the uh, upgrade when we do a 50 amp upgrade. They just have not yet been able to give us uh, dates for when they can do that and how much they can do. I have a meeting scheduled with them this week uh, so that we can discuss some of these things and get uh, the cooperation and coordination together so that the electrical contractor, Salish, and us 
know when we can start 50 amp installations and, and anticipate some level of success. We're still working on uh, what the cost might be. We're hoping earlier projections cover that. I'd like to show you something, if you bear with me for a moment. <laughs> For those of you out in television land, we're going to have a little demonstration of what the electrical box looks like. Can they hear Yes. So this is a sample of what the power box uh, on your site will look like. It will replace. <laughs> This will replace what you currently have. This box in the front is a new power panel. That power panel uh, contains a 50 amp outlet and a 30 amp outlet and two 20 amp outlets and the associated breakers. So it'll be plugging in just like you do now. Yeah, I know that's. Yeah. That's what I was laughing about earlier. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so on the back side is the box that Salish will put on. This is the fiber optic cable that's coming in. Oh, it used to be. Um, and then this box will contain electronics that Salish uh, supplies, which will uh, provide your site with fiber optics. So again, we're doing this in, in anticipation of being able to show you what it is you're buying uh, and what your 50 amp service would look like and uh, uh, trying to get a, a, our arms around how much it's actually going to cost to do each site. Pat, uh, people are some people in the park are eager to get 50 amp service. Will you be able to provide 50 amp service even if Salish doesn't put in their, their fiber optics at the same time? So as far as we're concerned, we're ready. Uh, Blue Sky is ready, we're ready. The, the maintenance department is ready to proceed with uh, identifying sites and what the cost might be. Obviously, there's marketing. So if at each power uh, supply box, uh, if we, the meter base, if we provide one site there with uh, 50 amps, if that's what's chosen, that's, you know, going to be a little more expensive. So there's some stuff that we have to know yet. But we got to get down to the cost of the wire, the trenching, and what it's going to take to actually put it in before we can give you uh, a firm price. It's been estimated at $1,500 per site. And as soon as we can confirm that, and these conversations with Salish are real important because are they going to participate uh, or do we just move ahead on our own? And so as soon as we can confirm that, then we'll be loudly announcing to the park uh, that uh, the 50 amp is available, it's on your block, uh, we're gonna proceed, here's the schedule, and that's what we're working on now to determine. Pat, um, I'm assuming that you need to dig a trench from the, from the road to each site. The trench will have a uh, plastic pipe that has the 50 amp service going to the site. Will, what else will be in the trench besides that particular pipe? So the discussions have been as we bring power uh, to each individual site that we uh, locate the water line that's feeding your site and that we trench in that area. And the trench would be small, we'd use a ditch witch. And uh, it would not be deep. Uh, we've, we've put all the primary power cables uh, below three feet, the, this would be above that. We'd be going over everything else that's there, so there's not a lot of interference with other things. But we want to look at your water pipe when we're in there and correct anything that's in the water line going to your site while we have it open and the opportunity. So we would put in conduit that carries the 50 amp service to your site, and it was intended for um, Salish to put in their own conduit 
and uh, they have talked, and this is a decision that we're having a little trouble with, of direct buried cable, in other words, it wouldn't have conduit, or uh, them installing conduit that they could pull their uh, fiber optic service through. So hopefully we'll have that answer when we have this, this, this discussion this, this week. So we'd have our conduit providing 50 amp service, we'd have a look-see at your water line, and we'd have a, either a conduit or a direct berry cable for the uh, fiber optic. Go ahead, Bill. If I remember right, to keep them getting a 50 amp, they are going to upgrade the 30 amp for them, too. Well, uh, if I understand you correct, correctly, Bill, the 30 amp cabling that, that's in there today will be abandoned. Yeah. All new 50 amp cable, all new cable from the power box, from the meter box. Go ahead. Didn't, didn't you just point out though that the box has 50 and 30? Yep, they're gonna divide the 50 amp into the two services, one 50 amp and the other 30 amp. So obviously you're not gonna have 80 amps of service at your box. You'll have a total of 50 amps, but you can plug in your 30 amp power if you want, or you can plug in your 50 amp power, it's up to you. But you can't have both. You can, you can plug in everything you can possibly get, including a waffle iron and a toaster, but as soon as you light up 50 amps of service, you're gonna blow your breaker. Go ahead, Terrell. So we're still, is still part of the discussion for members that are not interested in 50 amp to still be able to get fiber optic. Is that part of the picture? Uh, that would be not up to us, it would be up to Salish. But it's again, it's a question that's going to come up in, in our meetings with them yeah, to see what it is that they want to do. They're depending on us to open up uh, the line to bury their cable. We're not going to open up that line and not put 50 amps in and correct the water. Uh -huh. Doesn't make any sense. Well, so we're going to make that very clear to people that, that are, don't want 30 amp that you're not going to get anything. Right. And we're going to make sure that the membership knows about that. Yeah, when, when, uh, when we introduce this, that will be the case. We'll give sailors the opportunity to lay their own line. They can trench and lay a line if they want, if they want each individual. I just want to make sure we're being very clear with the membership. Right, That's yeah. not what people think now. They think they're going to have choices. So if we're, you know, it, it doesn't need to be, okay, member, you just have to figure it out on your own. It has to be part of our discussions as a business. Right, yeah. <coughs> so I just want to make sure that's part of this picture. Good point. Because I still think there, you know, my opinion, maybe it's just my opinion, I still think you've got easily 70% of the park that's not going to be interested in 50 amp just because our units mm -hmm. won't take it. Mm -hmm. so, so why would we pay, so you know, $3,000 for... That could be very well be true. When we looked at the last survey, 51% of the responders said they wanted 50 amp power. Another 38% held out, said we may want it, and then there was like 20% that said absolutely not. So it's not as high as you, you well, may have. Well, how many yeah. people responded to your survey? Yeah, I, I understand. And it was a percentage of the park. It was, about it was a fairly people. low percentage of the park. And it's why we're attempting to re-ask the question okay. in the next survey. I just want to make sure we're being very clear with members, because right now that's not the opinion. You know, the opinion is that we're going to have options well, from a policy standpoint, um, it, I can foresee a future where you won't be able to, uh, people will always want 50 amps when they're buying into the park. And the sites that don't have 50 amps will be much, much less expensive and, and, less, and certainly less desirable. Well, yeah, and you know my <laughs> opinion, you know, we're... Oh. We're not going to sell our sites ever, yeah. you know, till the end of the contract. You know, so it's not, there's a good chunk of people that are going to be having that same view that want, I mean, we're all investing equally in the grid. And the thought is to a lot of members is that we're all going to be treated equally and fairly with upgrades as well. Or and at least it's very transparent. <laughs> If they're willing to pay for the trenching to get okay, to well the that, site. and that's the thing that I don't think we are 
being very clear with our membership so that people understand that you're paying, I mean, people think we're paying thousands of dollars for the grid upgrade, the second grade mm -hmm. upgrade. But there's always this carrot that's been out there, you know, that you're gonna get fiber optics or, you know, a lot of people don't even understand. I can tell you there's a good chunk of the membership that doesn't even understand the whole premise of electrical. And they think, well, yeah, I'm gonna pay the $1,500 and it's gonna make my electrical better. But if I have a park model that was built, you know, it was built in the 70s, it's extremely expensive to upgrade that unit to utilize 50 amps. So we just need to make sure we're being very so clear and educational with our membership so they understand the concept yeah. of 30 and 50 amps. So it's one of the reasons I asked uh, maintenance to put together what their po new power post is gonna look like. Because we're gonna have many, many marketing uh, meetings with, meeting, m with members who are interested in 50 amps so that they can see what it is exactly what we're talking about and what they're gonna get for that. And we also have the old cable that we're gonna be taking out of the ground and show them that this is what we're replacing or have replaced. And again, we're in the very early stages of this and, and there's gonna be a lot more discussion, I would assume. Well, yeah. Uh, so that we can be clear to our membership. We really have to find out Salish's uh, position. Uh, 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 Wait a minute. Deb and then Don. Yeah. Deb had it, her hands up. Who's going next? Deb. You want me to go next? Uh, the, the thing that I know just a little bit about this, I know that the original plan was to, to do, you know, the water, the electric, and the, and the um, fiber optics at the same time. But what's held us back is, it, and it's been the issue since we started this, is you know, Salish coming up with the plan that we need to make it all work together, and, and that's what's been kind of holding us back, if, if I'm understanding this correctly. Yeah, so, Don? Yeah, I think, uh, I'm listening to what Daryl was saying, and that's what I've been talking about before, and I want the membership to feel, you know, open on its part, is that uh, lack of information hurts us more in this park than anything else lack of information. Now what was said is that if you don't put that 50 in there and you want to sell it in five years or 10 years, you're probably not gonna be able to sell it very well because you only have 30 in there and they want more in there and they want to bring a bigger thing in there. So it's, it's easier to sell if you want to sell later. You've got to explain that to the people that the chances of uh, reselling your property is not gonna be very well. And I think the explanation on, on uh, the issue that's happening here with Salish and everything that's happening uh, should be explained some way, and I don't know how. And that's why it's too bad we can't have a meetings here and in here and have people come down and listen to people to explain and everything, the details. That's where we're losing out. And you, when he says there's only 30 members watching here, that is very few compared to what's in here, in the park. So I think that's where we're hurting the biggest now. If we can get an open meeting to make this thing happen, I think we're, we're better off. Yeah, we currently have 63 and Well, you got 63 now anyway, mm. that's good. And we would love to have open meetings with all the membership, Don. Uh, again, we're at the early stages of the communication about this. We don't even have the park wired <coughs> totally yet, so we're, there's going to be a lot of discussion in the next uh, two years, and we will work hard to um, get that information out to the people. I think the older people are the ones, I'm sorry, but the older people are the ones I, I worry about that don't really know on a lot of things that mm -hmm. happen. It's our job here as this board and the and the staff down at the office to explain to the people that, you know, the justification of going up to here to 50 and mm -hmm. not staying at 30, you know, and trying yep. to help them do that. Yeah. But some, but uh, one thing about it, it's gonna be the pocketbook that's gonna tell them too, mm -hmm. whether they can afford it. So I'm just, I'm just explaining that. Yeah, speaking on behalf of the older people in the park, <laughs> we're, we're gonna need a lot of information in yes. order to, 
uh, really understand what's going on. Pat, go ahead. So the meeting that we had this summer outdoors trying to get uh, an offer an opportunity for members to participate and ask questions was focused on the grid and many of the meetings before that was focused on the grid and at every one of the meetings we've discussed 50 amp service and internet capability and uh, phone service and so forth. We don't even know what Salish would possibly charge a member to sign up for internet. We've asked we can't get the answer. Again, I'm hoping that this meeting face-to-face -face, will begin that dialogue so we can begin to outline a plan that we can present to the members. And I'm writing in each of our billing statements, comes out every two months, some information about some subject that I think all the members should know about. And since we have digital TV and other mediums for communicating with the members, we're putting more and more out there and this will certainly be one of them. I've been working on a marketing plan which includes uh, potential financing from the park side so that anybody who wants this upgrade can uh, find a way to get around the financial restrictions that are there. I think that that's essential that uh, people have that consideration as well, uh, hoping that from our perspective, the more people we get to participate, the cheaper it's gonna be per site. And the fewer people that we get to participate, well, the more costly it's gonna be, and the more costly it's gonna be for them. We're also looking at today being able to put in some of the infrastructure so every driveway will have stubbed in some piece of pipe that this could be run through. We don't know what that costs. We don't know if we can do it yet or not, but we're exploring that, trying to figure out how to set the park up for the future for people who did not take advantage of the original offering, but have a way to go in a future offering. So, uh, storage lots. <clears throat> we have not been renting space in the storage lots for a period of time because they were so out of control and people were just parking stuff in there and leaving it, abandoning it. We've gotten a number of abandoned units pulled out. Uh, S2, excuse me, uh, Blue Sky has asked to move their central location from storage lot one to storage lot five in the back of the park since we're about to embark on work in the back of the park. So we have begun cleaning up storage lot one uh, and leveling it and grading it, making it so trailers can't be backed over the hill or uh, into the green belt and so forth, and marking si the each parking site so that it's clearly identified. And we will begin then to move uh, the, the few things that are left in storage lot five down to storage lot one, at which point we'll level storage lot five and uh, uh, prepare it for, uh, for uh, blue sky and to be returning storage items there. Storage lot one, which we've started on, is almost done. Um, part of S, uh, blue sky stuff has moved out. They'll move out the rest of it as soon as we get storage lot five set up. And uh, so <clears throat> at that point in time, when we finish these two, we're gonna move into the big one, storage lot three, clean up around the compactor, clean up all the storage places, mark those, delineate the spaces, find out really how many spaces we have, how many places, uh, pieces in there, we don't know what they are, and the storage lots, that storage lot will be cleaned up. All of the uh, rental will begin, re, uh, begin uh, taking on new rental clients for the storage spaces, and we'll be back in business. Because we have computers in the Ranger vehicles now, they'll have maps of each of the storage lots. They'll be able to drive through and check to see that what's in the storage lot uh, belongs in the site that they're in. And we are, uh, we've asked administration to uh, cooperate with the Ranger so that when somebody comes, want, comes in and wants to rent a spot, that the Rangers go with them, help them locate the spot and park the vehicle correctly to see that it's within the size restriction of the space and that it's put in the proper space. And all of the decals now are issued to the Rangers, not to the individual member. The Rangers go around the storage lots and place the decals on the stored item when they're renewed so that they can see one, that it's the correct item. Two, that they actually renewed their decal. They'll know the people who did not and can report that to admin and admin can go out and ask for uh, the renewal on the storage. So it's, it's an effort to get, to regain control of our storage lots. And it will be by summer, we'll have 
uh, all of them done, and they'll be back active. Cool. Great. Under motions, I'm proud to say that there are no foreclosures. Yay. We had two that were coming up. Uh, between Vanita, myself, and Kitty, we worked with the individuals, and we were able to get them all compliant. And uh, so there are no, no foreclosures to discuss. I have one other thing that I don't know if you need a motion or not, but we have had 90 minute and six hour passes in our history that <clears throat> requires a whole bunch of manual labor to take care of. In the transition to uh, the S2 program in adjustments in MOS, we are capable of defining a pass term. Uh, and so a member can card in and card out and if they have not been in for longer than what that term is, they do not get charged the day. And I'm going to suggest a three hour pass daily. So you get the current plan is you get two six hour passes a month. This would be a three hour pass every day, which is far greater than the six hour pass. And it's automatic. We no longer have to have administrative people figuring out if it's, they should be charged, shouldn't be charged. We don't have the members stopping at the gate, walking up, signing up for a pass. They are able to card in, card out, and not be charged if they're within that time. Do we have that Scott? capability now? Yeah, that's no. Right. Okay. Oh. When you have that capability? Well, I, I, it's going to cost some money to get it programmed in. So, it, you know, we need to know that we want to move that direction before we go tell them How to do it. Uh, I can't tell you that. Okay. When you have a proposal, bring it back and we'll... we'll vote on it, all right? So I would ask for uh, s some indication now because I'm having that conversation tomorrow. Well, you're gonna have to change the rules. I know that. Because it's all in the rules. So mm -hmm. you're gonna have to do a rule change posted mm -hmm. and a motion. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna take some time because you gotta post it for 30 days. Well, it's gonna take some time to get all the programming and the S2 yeah. programming and everything else. But if we're gonna have to do rules, tonight is the night to decide that we're gonna change those rules. And uh, so that we can start on the process so that when everybody's ready and it's in place that we can move forward. I mean, okay. maybe you want to discuss this for a couple of weeks or something, I don't know, but our proposal is, is to go to a carding system. It could be a two hour pass, it could be a four hour pass, but a six hour pass every day is not a good idea. No, the, the point is, the point is we, we don't understand what actually you need to move ahead on this. Do you actually need us to give you an approval to move ahead? Yes. Okay. So, and I will add to this that this is not my idea. Uh, in our uh, discussions with for? Lake Connor, that's what they went to. They went away huh. from the 90 minute, six hour pass. They went to all three hour passes. Don. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, and I think that if you want <coughs> some, uh, to do it tonight, we should have talked about it before. Yeah. I think There's alternative B, A, and alternative B, and C. I'd recommend A, but uh, I'll go, I could go with B. You know, we gotta be able to do something like that, and this is why on each one we're gonna do. Scott, that way we answer. have some reasoning on this thing, and I think that not to do it tonight. I recommend not to do it tonight. Thank you. Scott? Yeah, uh, if we are, you know, like uh, Carol said, that we're gonna have to uh, have a rule change in order to do it, and uh, so if we're going to do that, um, if any of us have any ideas of something that might be coming up that needs a rule change, do it all at once. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you have, have something, have it ready to go, get it out to everybody, and just run it by it. Yeah. Nancy, then Don. No, I agree with Don, I think this, is something that we could be really successful at, but we have to have all the information in place, and I do think we need to wait for the next meeting to make a decision. We just don't have all the information. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, I appreciate, uh, you know, what we're trying to accomplish here, but we have to give the, the people in the park time frame to do the mm. change. Too. Yeah. I don't want to just come here and say, okay, we say in many meetings I had it changed and it was very tough is that if you needed it today you should have brought it here a month ago mm -hmm. so I think that or at a meeting so I think we 
we need to take a look at this. I, I like the change. I like the thing that possibly can come up. Not just because Connor Park did it or Thousand Trails did it. Mm -hmm. It's because Port Susan wants to do it. That's, That's what I want. Thank you. Bill. I would like to know the cost of everything. I think you're going to need to put a board committee together then because it's that, you know, we authorize the board authorized Moss to be written originally and now Moss is going to have to be modified because it's going to have to work with us too and uh, we're going to need somebody to sit down with. Uh, well, I thought Dean was getting all these prices so mm -hmm. we would know what it's going to cost. We, we have all the prices mm -hmm. for the S2. Well, why are we being given? We already well, approved, approved at the last board mm -hmm. It's been S two has been approved. What we don't have is what the integration will take from uh, uh, the transition to make it work with Moss. And we didn't have that information, nor do we have an estimate on that at this time. Did we find out about the cameras? The cameras are staying. We we decided mm -hmm. as a board not to move forward with the cameras. No, no so cameras. We only move forward with the S two integration. Yeah, okay. Jacob's in on this. Uh, yeah. So uh, from the technical side of things, our responsibility of the park is setting up the virtual server, the I getting the IP addresses, which is the address <coughs> for the computers, and doing the integration in the MOS. So our monthly budget uh, cost, which was mentioned in the previous board meeting, was $200 a month for the virtual servers. The IP addresses will not cost us anything because that is through our current Salish internet connection um, and then for the time that Doug uh, puts into integrating the software we are having a meeting tomorrow with Doug and that consists of what's in his contract. Doug doesn't have a question. You got a meeting tomorrow you want me to answer? Doug doesn't what? I mean it doesn't really answer the question because they're saying that it's going to be a cost. Correct and so the uh, what the board approved during the last meeting, that's the cost for S2. And then in the contract that was presented at the same time says who's responsible for what. And we're responsible for three we're things, the virtual the machine, the IP addresses, and the integration in the MOS. You know we're working with Raquel and Doug. So the answer is probably So I guess, yeah, I guess so the question is still, what is that flat rate? Go that ahead, was Deb. presented at, on the document during the last board meeting. Deb. So, uh, okay, so, you know, when, when it gets to the integration part, am I correct in thinking that, because I know at Lake Connor, when we went to Lake Connor, they, they did a lot of the inputting themselves to do the crossover, and that don't, we'll need that also before we're done, correct? Yeah, I'm not clear on that. That's why the meeting tomorrow. Okay. And uh, um, we're a little bit at Omnicon's mercy because we don't have a replacement for Moss. So Moss is uh, the program that we're trying to integrate S2 with, which is the same program that we integrate Symmetry with. It did not integrate, so as a result, we batch load. And so the cost of batch loading is uh, a, a laborer every day moving all the information from Symmetry into Moss. Right. And and there's a lot of a lot of duplication that is taking place w for for the employees, which means it's you know they're not able to do other things that they would have time to do. It's not working as smart as we could be working. No, and then they don't have access to symmetry because symmetry has uh, uh, you have to buy for each screen or computer you're going to put it on. You have to buy a license with uh, S2 that's included. Pat, I wonder if you can have your meeting tomorrow and get a little bit more information about what needs to be done and, and a, a sense for how much uh, work it will be in the, in the cost of it before we take any specific action. Okay. You can blame it on us for... Sure. For so, so know that S2 has said they will not accept our deposit for their program until these things are resolved. 
And they so want to know that there's integration or they won't give us the program. They want to make sure it works. Well, and you've had a hard time finding somebody that would do the S2 program, correct? Right, and mm -hmm. because of the proprietary nature of the MOS system, there's only one person that can do it, and that's this Omnicon guy. <coughs> so MOS is failing at the front gate daily, in fact, hourly, and we have called, uh, or excuse me, Symmetry, and we've called Symmetry, they refuse to talk to us um, because we have contracted Symmetry through Allied, and Allied no longer lives in our neighborhood, so they won't send anybody out to fix it. So aren't they in breach of contract? Yes. All right, then let's get rid of them. Well, what are we gonna replace yeah, it with? You gotta replace them with something. <laughs> Well, that's what, that's what he's trying to do now. That's, that's why we're here. Too, uh -huh. this okay. takes the place of that symmetry. Okay, so what, what is the uh, outcome that you want to see from tomorrow's meeting? Well, I'm trying to find out what they can do and what it's going to cost and how long it's going to take and what they need from us in order to do it. S2's been pretty clear on what they need from us. Omnicom is kind of part of that to be able to give them that information, a partial of that information. And they have to host some part of that action. That's how the two systems work together. Jacob? Um, so tomorrow's meeting uh, is consisting of a lot of like technical talk too. Um, so in my discussions with both sides, the S2 integrator and the one who manages our MOS system, um, based on discussions, all of this is possible. Um, so I have no concerns from my point of view. I've read all the documentation for S2 and uh, it should be a pretty easy integration. It's just the optics uh, and logistics and trying to get um, everybody to be on the same page. Look, Pat, from the, with the magic of the internet, uh, the board can come together for decisions fairly quickly and hold votes by wire if, if need be. So if you can give us some information, more information about the who, what, where, what, why, and how much after your meeting tomorrow, get it out on the internet to us, and we can discuss it amongst ourselves on right. the internet and, yeah. and take an action. I'm going to get everybody a piece of information I can get tomorrow, uh, because mm -hmm. from our perspective, this whole thing is critical for the park. Yeah. We are so antiquated, the <laughs> card readers are breaking down, people can't get their cards to read at the front gate, yeah. and uh, any number of things. And S2 is today, it's not old technology. Uh, we're gonna be able to read our telephones on that card reader some, at some point. And uh, we're gonna have access to buildings controlled by uh, S2. This is, this is a brilliant move for the park to make. No, we understand that, we, we love it, and. We, we all believe in that. Uh, we love it and we all believe in that. It's just that we need a little bit more information. Me too. Don? Yeah. Let me just go back to Steve too and get a clarification on the language. Is this life and death? Come on, somebody say something. <laughs> is so this we, life and death? We, we have a contract. No, 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 no. Is this life and death tonight or tomorrow? Oh no, we could got okay, plenty of time to consider this. this. Yeah. Do what we talked about. See, that's what we do. We jump on things. We don't let the people know because when we do the dis uh, discussion amongst ourselves tomorrow or the day after, these people don't know what's going on in 63 or maybe more now. Nancy, don't you know say what something? you're doing. What we are doing here. So what we need to do is do it properly and listen to life and death. If so Don, we death, I'll, I'll do it right now. I'll, hey, I'll make a, I'll make that motion, <laughs> but it's not life and death. So we, we can we, make things happen. You know, I know it's tougher on you, Pat, but if I hear that, we have to look at what we're doing and how we're doing it. And who are people we're working for? We're working, not working just for us. We're working for the other people that are out there in this park, and so, let them know all the information and how we got to that point. So, Don, I, I know you haven't been to a meeting for quite some time. I we have I discussed have. this at every single meeting we've had. Every single meeting we've discussed okay. S2. S2 has come to the meeting and presented to us. 
They've talked about all of the different uh, facets of making this change. This board is knowledgeable on S2. Well, that's what I said. It says life and death. It says well, life and death. We're going to have to. Saying, uh, I'm saying let's do it then. Damn it. We, so if, it's, if it's life and death, let's do the thing. But it's the idea that it's not life and death. I realize what you're saying. I haven't been here. Got to apologize. Been doing a lot of other things. But it's the idea that that's who we don't shouldn't be doing all the time. It's just pushing it out one meeting without doing a lot of information out there for us, and f information for the people out there that are watching. And I think that's the biggest problem: is lack of information. That hurts us part the most ever since I've been here. Lack of information. Because we might have it, because we're going to get it from you, Pat, but the other people are not going to know how we made that decision. Let's, let's pause for a minute, because you brought up lack of information several times, Don, and I don't think that you are mm -hmm. totally informed about how much information is going out to the park and has been in the last three to six months. Uh, Pat, why don't you summarize, if you can, how much information, new information, is going out to the park and how? So again, I go back to the survey uh, that was taken of the membership, and uh, it was the board's direction to do the survey and, and uh, assigned by them that that uh, came back with one of the results was communication. All of us have known that communicate, there's a huge breakdown in communication amongst the levels of the park, that there's a lot of magically made up truths that show up, seem to show up on uh, social media. And so uh, when, when I interviewed with the board, when we talked, I identified that communication was a problem. I've always known that. And that one of my goals was to try to bring about change so that the park membership knew more about what we were doing and, more and we were more transparent. You cannot believe how complicated that is during COVID because we can't present ourselves to the membership. I tried doing that by meetings in the park. Our first meeting that I had the first week I was park manager was attended by over 90 people. It was the biggest event attendance in an open meeting that this park has had since I've been a member I've never seen more than 30 people in this room who came here to listen to an open board meeting. We then set about uh, changing the communication system. We had a communication system. We'd send out a page every time something was wrong. As long as we were willing to spend the $75, we would not tell them when it was fixed. We changed that communication system to something that was more affordable, more informative, and we could use more often. And it had, would take both sides of the equation. It was the first thing we do. That shows up on your phone. It shows up on these digital screens. It shows up as a text message to you, and it shows up on the internet. You have multiple places to go to get information. And since now we weren't restricted to 140 characters, we could put as many characters as we wanted to. We actually put Jacob in there a few times. He's quite a character. Mm -hmm. And we got a whole bunch more information that's going out to the members now than ever before. We put up the digital screens. We're being criticized for it, but there is any amount of information that's going on there. We started PSCC TV, and that shows up on the screens, and it shows up on your television at home, and you can go in there and get all kinds of information. We're working on rebuilding the website, so the website has more meaningful uh, communication links. Uh, this is an ongoing project. We've come a long ways in a short period of time, and it's only just beginning. And by the way, I would like to congratulate you for doing it, too. Absolutely. We have really come a long way. Uh, the information is out there. People have to take advantage of it, of it though. Scott, did you have a question or a uh, not comment? Not a question, just a comment. That this is Tonight is the first time we have had this type of a meeting where the members can tune in to listen to what's going on. This stuff has been being discussed for the last six or seven months. But this is the first time they can hear it being discussed. And, you know, so, and it's good that they're able to do that. And, you know, for what we've been discussing, if we were to try to take all of this here, what we've discussed tonight, 
and put it on the uh, pieces of paper and send out to everybody, it, it, we couldn't do it. It'd be cost prohibitive. But it, this is a great way to communicate, and we're hoping that you know the people that are tuning in here are going to be able to get this information and understand some of it. And if they don't understand, feel free to contact the board, ask questions. Exactly. Feel free to contact the board. I sent out a communication. Wait, wait a minute, just, just a minute. Yeah. Jacob, how many people are, are on the line now? 52. 60? 52. 52? We lost some. I sent out a communication in one of the billing statements which every single member gets that said, if you're not happy, I'm not happy. Gave them my phone number, email address, and asked them to contact me. I have gotten some really interesting uh, responses, but they have been serious questions, and I take the time to answer them. I don't just give them a, well, thanks a lot for the question. You know, it's going to be fixed. I, I explained to them, I've written many different uh, reports and responses to members uh, so that they know. I, I'll tell you that I have not yet not received a thank you. And uh, people beginning to understand, oh gee, I didn't know that. And we're trying every communication link that we can find. And Jacob has been the thrust behind this. He has done a fabulous job. Some stuff hasn't worked as well as we thought it might, and other stuff has worked much better than we thought. Here, here. Absolutely. Well, and can I make a remark? Yes. You know, COVID has made it really hard. It, it, it has made it hard, and Pat's had to work around a lot of stuff. One thing I'm enjoying is when I get a package, I get an email that I've got a package. I, I'm, I'm really liking that because I might not. Yeah. I mean, we've never had that before. And, and when, when there is a storm coming up, we get an email. When there were uh, the dinners. We got emails about, about the dinners and when we could pick up the dinners. A lot of communication is going on in this park. A lot, about a thousand percent more than it ever was before. And we, we should think, thank Pat and Jacob for that. You're doing a great job on that. And there We've only just begun. Yep, and, and we're coming, we've come a long way in six months. Okay, another, anything? Um, that was my last issue. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Pat. Um, let's move into old business. Nance, do you have a, you have a report? progress report on, on, um, which, uh, on your grant program well, for okay. members? So, so Ginny can kind of do, if I, if I do okay for telling them, yeah. has continued to work with me and indicate that Wait, pause for a minute. Oh. Explain what we're talking about. Okay, so um, for about 20 years I, I was a grant writer, active, um, had a great amount of success, and the park has given me permission to go ahead and try to access new grants. Um, Ginny and I are hoping to have a meeting with the um, woman that leads that program, and that's Marilyn Sheldon. And I'm really looking forward to an open door to new and growing relationships with the tribe. I think this is something that's really exciting. And I'm looking forward to being able to do what's good for the park as well as the tribe. And as we work together to figure out how we're gonna make the infrastructure and everything else work, we must work together. And I'm really excited. Do so we have a date where you guys are gonna to get together? And we're working on that. We've, we've got, the question is out there. Oh, by the way, I researched all the information. I've got a lot of, um, uh, not just grants from the tribe, but I've got a couple other grants that I want to have you guys look at, but we'll talk about that next meeting. I think, I think basically the, the board has directed staff and other board members to try to come up with programs to help the membership yes. in, in, in whatever they need to do. Uh, uh, small grant programs, loan programs, whatever, because we recognize that uh, many of the members of the park are living on the, on the edge financial edge and they need help and we want to be able to help them when we can in a, in a reasonable way. Anyway, yes, sir. Yeah, I think 
I think that's that's good, you know, and I think, and, and that's one of the reasons I, I'm doing what I'm doing, and this idea that, you know, I think we need to, you know, uh, try to find these grants and work with the tribe because, you know, any grants has to, the tribe has to give permission because that's it's right. tribal land, and, uh, and it's a tribal entity because uh, being on tribal land and lease land, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully that uh, Maryland will make that happen. Yeah. We are excited. I'm yeah. really well, excited. But she works early in the morning, you know. Okay, well, I can like adjust four, my clock. Four, she starts at <laughs> 4 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And she does that so she doesn't work the, late. As the old song go, goes, if you got the money, honey, we got the time. We, we will come up with something. Um, let's postpone the, the, the VRC proposal. It, this is a kind of a segue, but last... Last week we talked about uh, a VRC proposal uh, to help out uh, certain members who received infractions and don't have the financial wherewithal to pay for those infractions. And the, the proposal was uh, that perhaps we could set up a program to do volunteer work to pay off those fines. Uh, yes, Don. Yeah, I think that's just like any other organization uh, kind of called community service where you have an organization set up for that. So I think there should be somebody, you know, have set up for that or maybe through the, through the, the manager, you know, Pat, and just make that happen. You know, because community service is really great. You could help do some well, things. Well, exactly. Got, if they got to uh, do some carpenter work or they can do some plumbing work or they can do something in the, in the building here, you know, because uh, somebody has that. They have the no. talent to utilize it. I won't fish. Okay, Nance? I was just going to say uh, one step further on that. Community service isn't just about having somebody volunteer to, um, to give their time, whether it's to pay back a debt or whatever. Community service is about building our community and building our relationship with the tribe and everything that we do to become a co coherent entity so that we're doing the best for our membership and the best for the tribe. And I'm done, I'm a big mouth. Okay, <laughs> then, then you come, come down there and uh, I'll ask the tribe as an elder, you can come down and cut my grass and you can do community service. You got a lawnmower open? <laughs> <laughs> I need the exercise. No, 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 I just, just giving you a bad time. But, that, but that's good, you know, I, I, I really feel, and I don't know what Jenny feels, I feel there's a good relationship right now with the tribe. Horses and has a good uh, relationship with the tribe. I haven't heard anything negative, anything, you know. Jenny might have heard some because she's right up the, <laughs> the building, but home, I haven't heard anything negative with uh, about Fort Stewart. Because I'd be the first one to say it, you know that. And that would be bringing food up here about uh, why all this negative thing. <laughs> I'm doing it because I feel good about it here. I'm glad to be happy. Okay, let's, uh, let's skip over new visitors for now and take some questions that have been sent in by the uh, people in the audience. Can you help us out, Jacob? Sure. Um, we do have a few comments uh, from our YouTube page. Uh, Jeff Miller was asking, will one of the 20 amp outlets be used by Salish? 20 amp. And I think that was answered because it would be a separate box. Who would like? Who would like to take that? Anybody? He Anybody? Said it was already answered. Yeah. What? He said it was already answered. Yeah. Past oh, okay. And then get the other question here, real quick. Folks, people, uh, Jacob is looking for the questions that were already submitted oh. so that everybody knows what's going on here. And Go so we, we did have some, uh, some questions also come in during it, um, but we'll start with the ones that got here first. Um, from Ken Nedgebauer, uh, regarding internet access, will Wi-Fi internet access be made available and located at the meter panels so members will not need to pay for fees on trenching the fiber optics? We don't know. We don't know. No, there's currently <laughs> no plans for that. Right now we're working on it. Okay. Uh, that's to be determined in the future. We, we don't have an answer right now. Okay. From Nan Clute, as a camping club and an escape from the outside world, could we bar the use of political and controversial flags? 
Amen. Anybody want to take that? Go ahead, Deb. I know that the rule is kind of if it's on your personal property, you could have it. There's something called the First Amendment. And I'm not trying to be, you know, bad or anything, but that's something I think the board is you don't have to apologize going to discuss. For the First Amendment. But, but, but it is, I mean, if it's on your, it, you can have it on your personal property. You cannot have it, you can't have a sign posted in the ground there because that's tribal land. But that's something I think the board is going to be discussing a little bit more. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, I, I think what we're looking at is, I hate to say it, this whole thing is a tribe's. So personal property, you're, you're on it right now, right now. Yeah, but Don? So you, you yeah. can't do it even on, on your trailer because that trailer is on, on, on leased land. Except that the trailer belongs to you. Huh? I know if it's on leased land. The land around here is all leased by the tribe. Do you do that portion? Yeah. Go ahead, Terrell. Well, my opinion is that it violates my First Amendment rights because it's being forced on me. And this is a recreational campground. If I were going to a state park, they wouldn't allow me to post political flags all over, even if it was on my, you know, even if it was on my trailer, it wouldn't be allowed. I mean, I don't want us to, I personally don't want us to forget that this is a recreational campground. Oh, you're right. It was intended for people to come up and recreate and camp. It wasn't intended for people to live here. So I personally want to keep that in mind, that it's a campground. So we keep it you know, to be honest, I don't want to hear everybody's political views shoved down my throat when I drive down my road. You know, I don't think it's appropriate. I definitely don't want to have any profanity. I personally am not a fan of weapons, but that's my personal feeling. You're not a fan of what? Of personal you know, weaponry. You know, I don't think it's necessary, but, you know, that's my personal opinion. And I would like us to not forget that we are a recreational campground. S Scott, you had a comment? Yeah, my comment on it would be that uh, if, like uh, Don Hatch was was saying that you know we you know we all know we are on you know tribal property, and if the tribe has some guidance or directive that they enforce throughout the tribe tribal land, yes, <coughs> we're going to have to abide by that, whether anybody likes it or not. Yeah. And even you know it's. The First Amendment says that we can say or say what we want, print what we want, and display what we want, as long as you know, it, and within reason. You know, you know, foul language and stuff we can't do. That's everybody knows that. But if if there is something from the tribe, we're going to have to abide by it, and it doesn't matter what our personal feelings are <coughs> on that. So, so we would need a direction Wait. as a board. We would need direction for that to put out to the members. We can't just say, well, you can't do that. You gotta have a reason <coughs> for it. So that's my thoughts. Okay, Jenny. I can um, send out the verbiage um, from our Title VII code. However, if you wanna review it before I send it to you tomorrow, cause I'll go home and I'll send it. Um, you can find it on the Tulalip Tribes webpage under codes and it's Title VII. And I don't have the exact 7.3 something, I think. But I don't minute. have the exact one, but it talks about signs in there. Wait a minute. Mr. Google so is working call. even as we speak. Deb, did you have a comment? That would yeah. Guidance. My, my comment will be, and I'm not trying to be argumentative, but even on tribal land when there's, when there's a camp, I mean, I don't personally put signs up, okay? I don't put them on my cars. I don't put them on my personal property. I don't put it on my lots, okay? I don't. Yeah because that's personal. But I do know when there's, when there's elections tribally, they do have campaign signs up. Mm -hmm. They had them for Biden, they had them for Trump, they had them for whoever else. So I mean, I, I think we go with what they have, but. They got them now, yeah. yeah. And like I was saying earlier, 
you can post signs up three weeks prior to an election, mm -hmm. but within 24 hours after an election, all signs need to come down mm -hmm. off the front of the That's reasonable. Yes. So, um, good you, can, you know, I can, as code enforcement officer, I can find whoever left their signs yeah, up. Basically, okay. no profanity or Correct. something untoward. Uh, I guess this means that my Dr. Zeus sign is no longer appropriate. You need appropriate. to take it down. Can't yeah. do that? Go I ahead, won't, I won't say what I was going to say. Never <laughs> mind. 7.1. Go ahead, Dad. Okay. Uh, the next Judge. question is from Anita Green. Uh, her question is, whose positions on the board of directors are up? Mine is. And mine. Okay. These three are Terrell, Scott, and Nancy. Uh, next comment is from John Godfrey. His question is, how much will all of these cloud services cost? It sounds like it's going to be expensive. Um, I could respond to that. Um, right now, we are on a $15,000 grant, so it is not costing, costing us anything right now. Um, we have that till about the end of 2021. After that, um, right now we're budgeting uh, $200 per month for cloud services. And this is eliminating the need to have a air conditioner running all the time. Um, it is also putting all of our data and all of our um, server infrastructure in a secure environment. And if you put that into a dollar amount, if it was in real life, it would be a whole lot more expensive than $200 per month. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Um, next, next question. Dean, was Dean going to say something? Wait a minute. Uh, Ken Birdkit asked, does working with Salish mean that we will have access to internet? Oh, okay. S say that again. Uh, Ken Birkett asked, does working with Salish mean that we will have access to internet? Very good question. Uh, you want to answer it, Dean? Uh, Pat? It, that's the whole intent of working with Salish. They're an internet provider. They do that through fiber optics. It would be the highest speed that's available in this manner uh, at the present time, and that's what we're hoping they will provide. And uh, we're going to be testing out Starlink, um, just like a test dish to see how well it does. I know some other people in the park have also uh, pre-ordered Starlink, um, so people will have more than just Salish Internet. Can I answer that? Yes, go ahead. So um, we looked at Starlink early on when they began to make their uh, offering. And of course, we did not have a direction yet uh, of how we could get internet in the park. We are using hotspots at maintenance, at uh, the post office, at uh, the laundromat, uh, other areas in order to get them uh, on the internet and be able to accept credit cards and so forth. It's pretty restrictive. As a result uh, of that thinking, we went ahead and applied to Starlink uh, as a club to uh, find out what's going on and when we could have that service or know more about it. Recently, uh, I'd say within the past 30 days, they made an offering. We uh, had to give them $99 in order to sign up for a Starlink base and be able to have the service so that we could evaluate it. We felt at a minimum it would support, uh, if we did not get internet fiber optics, it would support our goals for the post office, which is to include a package uh, delivery system, uh, and it would solve the uh, problems that we have. Starlink. Re is reporting to be faster than fiber optics and so therefore it would be a truly high-speed internet connection and we are signed up and in line uh, to get one of their units to find out if in fact it will serve the park. Um, okay, so it, next question is from Ryan Simpson. I understand the plans are not final and I'm new here so I've not heard much about the 50 amp specifics but will members only be given one chance to upgrade to 50 amp, or can this be done at a later date? Pat. So there's still a, a, a lot of consideration as, as you heard the conversation earlier on 50 amp service and internet connections for each of the sites. And um, we are looking for 
the ability to do as many as we can when we finally get there so that we can get the economy of doing them all at one time, digging all in one space. It was always intended that you could sign up later. And now the discussion has begun to try to put in some infinite, uh, infrastructure so that if you sign up later, it is not as complicated as it might be. We don't know the cost of that, if it's practical, uh, if it would be worth doing. But to answer the question, yes, uh, you will be able to get it later. What we don't know is what a later cost will be in order to put the, uh, ser the service in. And by the way, let me <coughs> emphasize the fact that the whole uh, internet and everything, it's not going to be free. I mean, if we go with Salish or if individuals go with Salish, there's going to be a cost to it. It, it isn't going to be provided by the park. Uh, last question is from uh, Isen Powder. Um, his question is, what is MOS and what is S2? And I can answer that if you like. Uh, MOS is what we use for our accounting, um, basically tracking days, all of your contact information, um, and uh, basically your membership or your member as a park. Um, S2 is an access control system, um, so it can do everything from uh, typing in a code at a door to scanning your card at the front gate, security cameras, also integration in the fire controls. Um, so if we get an alarm at a building and it alerts our rangers that there's an issue at a certain location. Um, so it provides us pretty much a complete system to do all of our security and uh, infrastructure management. Uh, thank you, and the, the name is Issen, just so you know. Any other questions? There are no other questions. Why don't we pause for a minute and see if there are any other that come in. Can we do committee reports? I could read some comments that came through on YouTube. Okay. Um, so, and, so this might be a question. Ann Biggs asked, I know Nancy is my liaison and I talk with her frequently, but I am confused as to when I am to talk to her and when to talk to Pat. Go ahead. Okay, so any information that Ann gives to me that I don't feel that is a board decision, that's what I was talking about earlier, I give to Pat first and see if it fits into what's working with our programs and what we're setting up. And then he'll get back to me and say, yeah, this is something we want to say to the board. Decisions I can make on my own that I know um, as a liaison I do and I bring to the meeting. So it's, it's honoring the board for what we do and honoring the manager for to stay on that balance. Policy versus administration. Uh, Larry Johnson asks, is the old wire that is being pulled copper, what are the estimate of what the return will be on the recycling side to offset the grid cost? Copper is it? Is it copper? Some of it's aluminum, some of it's copper, and you won't know until you start pulling it out. Very little copper. So the answer is we don't know for sure. It's an individual site. Some sites may have copper, some sites may have aluminum. The aluminum will definitely need to be replaced in the near future. Anything else? Okay. Um, Let's, um, why don't we adjourn the meeting and then move into an executive session now. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? I make the motion to adjourn. We have the executive. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Okay, we are officially Can adjourned. Can I say something before you yeah, close the meeting out? Oh, we're, we're going to talk in executive session. No, I know that, but I just want to tell you how much I appreciate the fact that all of you have worked to make this happen for the membership. We've all wanted this. Each one of us have talked about getting to this point, and it's been a struggle to get here, but we've made it, 
and I heartily congratulate all of you. And we heartily congratulate Jacob and, and you that made it happen. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll be concluding our broadcast of the board live meeting. Have a good day or night. Okay.